Good morning. <clears throat> Last week, uh, Pastor Ben started the series on parables, the parables of Jesus. And um, one of Jesus' main ways of preaching, of teaching, was the parables. And uh, theologians call it narrative preaching, the story. Now, Jesus ministered, he ministered in Galilee. Galilee was uh, rural. There was a farming went on there. <laughs> there was shepherds. The largest city in Galilee, the main city was Capernaum. It was a fishing port. So what Jesus would do, <clears throat> he would get his teachings from the, what people looked at, what people saw, for example, somebody working, a farmer sowing seed, or somebody, a fisherman casting out the net. He wanted people to remember, he wanted people to remember what he taught. He was an expert at it. He was, I mean, he was good. And so it were things of everyday life that he wanted them to relate to, get a message from. So when they saw these, these people, after he was not there, they could remember the lesson. <clears throat> so last week, Pastor Ben preached on the prodigal son. Today we have another parable. This parable, it's entitled, Pulling Weeds, Reaping Wheat. It's a parable about the, uh, the tares, the wheat and the tares. <clears throat> and so I invite you to open your Bibles Open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 13, starting with verse 24. <clears throat> Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in the field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servant came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? Verse 28, An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, <clears throat> because while you're pulling the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring it into the barn. Then he left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, The one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. <clears throat> the field is the world. The good seed stands for the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people of the wicked one or the evil one. And the enemy who sows the, them, who sows the weeds, is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are the angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. <clears throat> this tells us there's no hell right now. People think there's a hell. It's at the end of the age, and it's supposed to be to destroy sin, get rid of sin. They will throw them into the uh, flaming furnace, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Whoever has ears, let them hear. <clears throat> he that sows a good seed, it says, is the son of man. In other words, Jesus Christ. He sows nothing but good. Now, the good seed are the children of the kingdom. It's people, believers, believers. The tares and weeds 
or the children, it says, of the wicked one. The, the good seed, what it represents, it represents the word of God. The word of God. It's teachings. Now, <clears throat> the tares, the weeds, represent the false believers who deny the character of Christ. The enemy who sows the weeds is the devil. You know, neither God nor angels ever sow weeds. They sow nothing but good. Now, the tares are always, <clears throat> they're always sown by Satan. And I found out that in the East, in the East, men sometimes took revenge. They took revenge of their enemies. And the way they did that, I, was, I found out, <clears throat> is that by spreading on a new leaf and a field where they had just planted grain, you know, also planting bad seeds. They would throw bad seeds. They'd, probably, they'd do it probably at night. They would throw bad seeds. Um, and what it did, what the bad seeds did, the tares, they injured. They injured the crop and brought trouble and loss to the owner of the field. You know, that's what Satan tries to do with Christ. His hatred for Jesus. Satan scatters evil seed among the good grain of the kingdom, among believers. Sometimes he scatters bad grain. And so, and what he sows in these people, he, try, he attributes to God, to Jesus. But, like I mentioned before, Jesus never sows weeds. It's always good. <clears throat> By bringing into the church sometimes, and I'm talking about sometimes there's people, a person that comes to the church is really, really divisive. <clears throat> we don't see that here. But um, my friend, Pastor Charlie Liu, when he was pastor of the church in Diamond Head Church in Honolulu, Hawaii, a young man came to that church. It had a lot of promise. He came there and... Um, Right away, you know, they try to include him. <clears throat> and um, he had a very divisive spirit. He, bent to, he began to divide the church, cause division. And Pastor Lou didn't know what to do. It got to the point where he had to go to the conference and try to get some help. You know who that, <clears throat> that man was? This is many years ago. It was David Koresh. It was David Koresh, leader of the Davidians, Shepherd's Rod. And uh, <clears throat> he caused a lot of problems there. And you know the massacre that happened April 19, 1993 in Waco, Texas. <clears throat> so he divided the church. He caused a lot of problems. And uh, Satan likes to do that kind of stuff. He likes to divide. Divide and conquer. Try to do things that will affect the work of Jesus. Now, in this parable, this parable we're looking at today, Christ has not, I'm going to repeat this twice, this is very important, Christ has not committed to us the work of judging character and motives. I'm going to say it again. Christ has not committed to us the work of judging character and motive. No, he hasn't committed that to us. You know, and some Christians are grieved. They're grieved as they see true and false worshipers together, mingled in the church. They long to do something to cleanse the church. There's always people like that. They want to cleanse the church. Like the servants in this story <clears throat> of the householder, they are ready to uproot the tares. But Christ says to them, no, lest while you gather up the tares, you root up also the wheat with them. Let them both grow together to the harvest. He knows our nature too well. God knows our nature too well <clears throat> to entrust us that kind of work. Should we try to uproot the church from those whom we suppose are weeds or tares? 
we would sure make mistakes. We would make mistakes. Often we regard the hopeless people, the very ones that Christ is trying to draw in, people that we might see as terrors, might be the ones that Jesus is trying to bring to himself. Were we to deal, were we to deal with these souls according to our imperfect judgment, it would perhaps, maybe there's a soul out there <clears throat> that's looking for hope. We might injure, we might hurt that person. <clears throat> Many who think themselves real Christians, I mean, we gotta be careful. We gotta be careful. Um, the warning is here. It's not our job. Pastor, you need to cleanse the church. You know, there's no, no, it says no. The harvest will take care of that. We're not the reapers. It says the angels are the reapers. There's a, they, they're the ones that separate the wheat, I mean, the wheat from the tares. That's not our work. <clears throat> There's going to be many in heaven that we suppose that we thought wouldn't be there. Have you, you've read that, right? There's going to be surprises in here in heaven. Yes. Men judges by appearance. God judges the heart. He knows. There's a beautiful example of this, by the way. <clears throat> when God sent Samuel to anoint the future king of Israel, <clears throat> he sent him to the house of Jesse. And Samuel went there, <clears throat> and Jesse brought his sons out. And you know what? When Samuel saw Eliab, the firstborn the firstborn of um, Jesse, he said, oh, that's the future king of Israel. Nuh-uh, it wasn't. So he paraded, Jesse paraded <clears throat> all his sons before Samuel. And Samuel was kind of complex. He was, he was wondering, he says, do you have any more sons? He says, yes, I have one more. He's out in the pasture. He's out pasturing the sheep. Bring him. As soon as he walked in, God said, that's the one. You know, we can make mistakes. <clears throat> Samuel was going by appearance. What he was saw doesn't work that way. We cannot judge a book by its cover. God has not given us that work to say this is tares, this is wheat. <clears throat> no. I have an example here. Let's look up at the screen. And um, if we could put that up. You know, we have to, you see, look at that picture above. Look at, look at, there's one in the middle. I don't know if you can see it. But what do you think is wheat? What is a tear? You know, what we see there is a baby tear and the baby wheat, they look alike. They look the same. In fact, they're hardly indistinguishable, the middle one and the other one. And... Um, you know, only when they mature, when they grow, will the wheat and the tares, you know, you're going to notice a difference when they mature, when they're fully ripened. And that's in spring. <clears throat> As you can see in the picture, now this one has a marked difference when they grow up. This is when they mature. And um, the tear, which is on the left side, you're right, I think. Yeah, you're right. Anyway, you know, um, it's, it's very light. It lacks substance. Now, the wheat on the right is heavy, and it bears fruit, or, or better yet, grain. And you know the tear has these tiny black seeds in it. And if you were to eat, thinking that was wheat, and you were to eat a tear, the little black seeds, they'll make you dizzy, and they'll really make you sick to the point of death. <laughs> so what we see, the wheat gives life, the tares kills. In other words, dangerous. <clears throat> but you know, when, they, when they're in the same root, when they're growing up, if you were to grab a tear, say, you know, <clears throat> I'm going to take this tear, I'm going to take it out of there. <clears throat> they're so intertwined when they're little, when they're, I mean, when they're barely sprouting, that you would take out wheat with it. So we're told we need to wait 
till the harvest. The reapers are who? <clears throat> the angels. God sends them out to harvest their wheat. So, uh, <clears throat> you know, another thing we could learn from this uh, parable, I found very interesting and very important, and that is <clears throat> the teaching of this parable illustrates God's own dealing, you know, his own dealing with angels and men. You know, how does he deal with them? How did, how did he deal with the angels when they rebelled in heaven? Well, let's read the text again. Matthew 13, 28, 30. The servants asked him, do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may root up the wheat with them. Let both grow until the harvest. <clears throat> we all know that Satan is a deceiver. He's a liar. The Bible says he's a thief. When he sinned in heaven, listen carefully to this. And this is from some of the commentaries and Christ's object lessons, books that I've been reading. When Satan sinned in heaven, even the loyal angels, the loyal angels did not fully discern his character. He was a high-ranking, the highest-ranking angel. They could not fully discern his character. They're, they're not omniscient like God. <clears> that <throat> knows everything. This is why God did not at once destroy Satan, did not zap him. <clears throat> you know, had he done so, if he would have killed Satan, the holy angels would not have perceived the justice, the love, the character of God. No, they wouldn't have. He had to show his colors. He had to show us because through the long ages here on earth, he's showing his colors. We see wars, we see hatred, we see all these things. It's not God, it's Satan. He's showing his colors. That way, this way, sin will not rise again. Everybody's going to be convinced that Satan is evil. He's mean. He's out to destroy. Yes. So, <clears throat> God didn't want them to doubt his goodness, his love. Therefore, he spared them. He was patient. Oh, man. I mean, to allow that to happen. But, so another example of God's patience. You know, one thing I learned as I was preparing this uh, message, God is patient. We need to be patient with those out there. Now, another, another example is Judas Iscariot who betrayed Jesus. As we find in the SDA commentary, did God know? Did God know that Judas was a thief, was full of greed? Did God know that? Sure he did. But you know what? The disciples didn't. They held Judas in high esteem. He was a treasure. So Jesus was patient. He was patient with Judas. He was trying to work with him. He knew who he was, but he didn't want to, you know, the disciples, you know, they're not omniscient. They don't know all things. You know, here they see Judas as a, one of them, very talented, very gifted. So Jesus held up. He held up on that. But once again, what I say is this. We need to learn patience with one another. We need to learn patience with those that are just growing in the faith. Another point to keep in mind is this, is that every one of you, every one of us, has what is known as sympathizers, people that will line up with you. If I get in trouble, for example, with you, I get in trouble with your friends, with your family, you know, it just spreads. So, we have to build bridges. We have to see wheat. For us, when we look at each other, we're all wheat. We're not the ones to say, that's a tear. No. So, like it says up there, you know, we need to build 
bridges and not walls. Because people have what they know known as sympathizers. And <clears throat> you know, shouldn't we be like Jesus? Like we was with um, Satan, was he was with Judas, and so many others in the Bible. Patient, forbearing with one another, trying to help each other, trying to do good, you know, to people. You know, you know, in the early church, the early church, we have a good example. 538 to 1798, during the Dark Ages, during the time of the Reformation, <clears throat> they were trying to weed out the tares. I mean, they were going after people that wanted to read the Bible. The Waldenses had to go up in the mountains in France. Hus was trying to teach the Bible, and he went to the stake. Luther, Calvin, John Calvin, all these great reformers, they were persecuted. Some were put in prison, some were, some were even killed. Giving a real bad picture of Jesus. Jesus, God does not work that way. That's Satan's method. You know, get rid of those terrors. Get, you know, they were calling them heretics. They were going after them. These were good people. You see, that's not our job. That's not the way Christ works. We're not to be the ones to decide there's a tear. No, it does not work that way. So, you know, the, um, so that's so important. Satan's method is to destroy, to bring the world under his control. <clears throat> He'll use any means. You know, God has been misrepresented by, by Christians many times. The way we act, the way we treat people, the way we go after people. No. God does not work that way. He is a loving God. He is a caring God. He's a God of grace. He's a God of goodness. He's a God that wants to save, not destroy. That's the kind of God we serve. <clears throat> And he has given it a beautiful example in Calvary. Rather than leave, you know, where he gave his life for us, you know, he showed us his love, his care, his goodness. You know, as we have seen, the teaching in this parable, the teaching in this parable is not judgment and condemnation of others. That's what I picked up. Is not judgment or condemnation, but humility. Self-trust, you know, distrust of self. You know, we know that uh, from this parable that they're going to grow together. There's going to be evil. There's going to be weeds. You know, there's bad apple everywhere. You know, but, so that's what we learned that um, as followers... We need to be patient, like Jesus was with the people of his day, with the rulers and leaders of his day. He was patient. We need to learn patience in face of the situations that the enemy, the devil, you know, <clears throat> he intends to bring people down, to disturb and distract us. <clears throat> Let us both grow together. We don't know who the tares are. Let's grow together. <laughs> Everything will be sorted out. Everything's going to be sorted out at the harvest. <clears throat> so that the weeds will be burned and the wheat will be gathered. The ones that are going to be burned, they chose to go in that direction, turn their back on Christ. And we know the purpose of hell is to destroy sin. Not burn forever and ever. It says only the righteous have eternal life. And the word that's used there forever is ilion, which means as long as it lasts. As what? As long as it lasts. They're going to they're gonna die out. The purpose is to destroy sin. <clears throat> yes. So um, they need to grow together. That's an important lesson to learn. You know, we need to be patient. But equally important, there's another lesson I got out of this. <clears throat> An even more encouraging one. 
instead of being tasked with a responsibility, but you got to pull out the terrorists, you got to pull out the bad, the bad people. You know, that's not our responsibility. We can concentrate in being wheat that God in Christ planted us to be. After all, weeding the field, trying to weed the field, weed a church, you know, it holds no appeal for me. I certainly, it doesn't for me. I don't know about for you. What makes my soul sing, what makes me invest myself in the work of bringing glory to God, bringing people to Jesus, you know, sharing the gospel, the good news. That's what, not trying to find out, hey, who's weed and who is tares. For me, is being able to help a person, being able to bring a person to Christ and be able to share the good news of God's grace, of God's goodness. That's what, that's what really fires me up. You know, I don't want to waste my, waste my energy. You know, I don't want to waste my energy pulling out weeds. Uh, that's not it. You know, I want to use my energy. I want to use what God has given me to win souls for Christ. You know, that's what we have to do. Instead of saying or thinking, we cannot, we cannot, you know, read a person's character, their motives. The God, God makes it clear in this parable. <clears throat> Use our energy for good things. Yes, the good news of Jesus which is able, you know what? He's able to change the hardest heart, the most wicked heart. That's a gospel. He can change a person's heart. He can change a person's life. I've seen it. You've seen it. You know, that's what it's about. <clears throat> Some people think that bad people can change. That is not true. In my ministry, I've seen conversions I've seen people that have changed in ways that are incredible. So when see people say people can't change, that's not the truth. That's not the gospel. Only God knows a human heart. And only he can change a heart of stone into a heart of flesh, a new heart, what we call the new birth. Yes. He is the only one capable of taking that heart and changing changing our mind, changing us. So let's settle down. Let's settle in. The enemy <clears throat> may be at work, but God work, God's work is always much greater. He's out there working. You know, I've seen Jesus do things that are incredible in my own home where I was raised. And at the end, <clears throat> you will know who is wheat and who are terrors. And if you don't, you know, we got to get ready for Jesus' coming. I think the coming is very close. <clears throat> well, the good news is that there's still time for us to change and help others except Jesus Christ who could change their hearts. Don't you believe that? Yes. So let us remember, be patient. God is so patient with us. I mean, incredible. He gave Satan time. And he used that time to poison a third of the angels. But you know what? The, the angels, the good angels, had to see the real character of that evil person, the devil. So let's be patient with one another and let us sow good seed, all right? And the good seed is the Word of God. Let us study the Word of God and become more like Him because it's all about character. Making, we want to have a character like Jesus, a loving, a caring character like Jesus, and we can have that by that relationship with Him. God bless you.